In this video, we'll look at how to create a SSAS project. Creating an SSAS project is typically done using Microsoft's Visual Studio. I'll open up Visual Studio now. This particular copy has the SQL Server data tools installed. This is 2013. You may be using other versions of Visual Studio, but they all work the same. The first step is to go through and create a project. A file new project will get you going. And at that point, you need to select the business intelligence template and the analysis server collection of templates. There are several ones there. But the one you want, in most cases, is the top one, which is for uh, the uh, multi-dimensional and data mining projects. This will allow you to create cubes. Analysis Server also comes in a tabular format. The tabular format is relatively new. It came out in two, uh, 2012. It provides a different support for creating um, reporting structures. Uh, another video will talk about that. Right now we're going to use the traditional multi-dimensional and data mining projects, which allows us to make cubes. You probably want to pay attention to the name of the solution. Often the solution will have a collection of projects. So I might call it my module one projects and then the actual multi-dimensional project will go inside I think I'll just call it mod one project or mod two or mod five or whatever the name makes sense to you then I'll go ahead and hit the browse button and navigate to a place where the class files are being used and set it up from there. I don't recommend putting on your desktop at all. I do recommend actually going through and creating a folder for class files and then perhaps subfolders underneath that for the different classes you're currently working with. When you say OK, it will go through and create the solution and the project. It may take a few seconds. What it's doing is it's going through and making the subfolder and putting the files in. Let me uh, make this a little smaller so it's easier to see. Come on. There we go. If you get lost as far as where the project's at, you can right click on the solution icon and choose Open Folder in File Explorer. Oddly enough, the project doesn't have that same menu option. I always thought that was kind of odd. Another odd behavior is that if your project is the only one in the solution, Microsoft, depending on your settings, can hide that. I choose to show the project, uh, the solution myself, by going to Options under the Tools menu and selecting, under Projects and Solution, the option here to Always Show Solution. Otherwise, you don't see the solution. You don't actually get that option to see where the files are at. Uh, not from there, although to tell you the truth, it's not that big a deal. You can always find it in the property section down here. In upcoming videos, we'll take a look at going through and configuring the various different files that go under these folders. Uh, but just a couple little things you should note on the project. Now, let me turn that solution back on. I really am not a fan of leaving that invisible. You can right click on the project now and go to the property section. A dialog window shows up. A couple of settings I recommend you turn on is R, excuse me, uh, under deployment. Change the 
default processing option to do not process. This helps in the troubleshooting of uh, your SSAS project. And then make sure that the server that you're going to deploy this to later on is correct. Uh, in other words, if you're using a computer called, I don't know, my PC or my laptop, you can type that in. Localhost will work. It'll just be that. <coughs> Oops. It'll work just fine. And you can leave it at that. The only thing is that you have to remember that um, if you're using a named instance, you have to include the named instance after this. So let's say I've installed SQL 2012, I've installed SQL 2000, I've installed SQL 2005, and I've installed 2014. Every time I install it on the same machine, I have to give it a different name. This is called a named instance. Often I just keep it simple. Uh, I think if I've installed it on this machine multiple times, I probably would have called it SQL 2014. Uh, not because you have to, because it's just easier to remember. Whatever name was uh, decided to, it was decided that it should be called when it was installed. If you did the installation, you would have made that decision. You should know what that is. The database name is just perfectly fine, so there's not much more to tell at this point. There's really not a whole lot going on as of yet until we start filling in the various different files that go under these virtual folders. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.